Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a quick video on reactive oxygen species and why they are important in your body. So they're important for doing something called the oxidative burst reaction. So most people when they think of reactive oxygen species they think of something bad. You want to get rid of them. So that's why people take enormous amounts of vitamin C, eat a lot of blueberries, they want those antioxidants uh, to get rid of these reactive oxygen species because they think they're all bad. Well, let me tell you, they are not all bad because they are necessary, in fact, to deal with a lot of the bacterial invaders in our body. How do we, do, how do we use them, okay? So they are an important tool for cells called neutrophils and other phagocytic cells like macrophages. So our neutrophil over here is a white blood cell and it's moving along in the blood and here you can see its cell membrane outlined in blue and it finds these bacteria and what what is it going to do so it's going to eat them up it's going to phagocytose them and form something called a phagolysosome which is basically a vesicle with with a bunch of um, molecules inside that are inside that are going to help kill this bacteria so once it's inside the neutrophil, this lysosome is now going to start producing reactive oxygen species. So how do you build, a, how do you do re reactive oxygen species creation? Well, you do the oxidative burst reaction steps. So you start off with your friendly neighborhood oxygen, and you're going to convert it to something called superoxide. Superoxide is extremely reactive and very deadly, so it's going to go ahead and help kill the bacteria. Um, how do you do this? Well, you're going to need an enzyme called NADPH oxidase. So it does exactly what it sounds like. It oxidizes NADPH. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, so you're going to get NADPH giving up its electron and giving it to oxygen to make superoxide, which is essentially oxygen with just one more electron, making it a free radical molecule. Next, we're going to convert our oxygen molecule to our hydrogen peroxide molecule using the enzyme superoxide dismutase. Ironically, this is also toxic for bacteria, but it is less toxic than superoxide. But our main goal here is not to produce superoxide, it's to produce this final guy which is called hypochlorite. Well, well, you'll most likely know it as bleach. So hypochlorite and bleach are the same thing, and you make hypochlorite using the third step, which is using the enzyme myeloperoxidase. It takes a chlorine, adds it onto hydrogen peroxide, makes hypochlorite, also toxic to bacteria. All of these three compounds will go into a bacteria, disrupt proteins, disrupt the membrane, and kill it. So these are very important in the oxidative burst process. The important thing here is that hypochlorite is special in that it won't only kill bacteria, it also is used as the primary killer of fungi. So that's very important to remember and is very testable. Now let's go through this pathway and what will go wrong if one of these enzymes is missing or goes haywire. So NADPH oxidase. If we don't have NADPH oxidase, we can't produce a lot of these further steps because it's the first enzyme in our pathway. So people with, with low NADPH oxidase get a disease called chronic granulomatous disease. What does that mean? Well, since you can't kill the bacteria, your next best option is to isolate them. What these phagocytic cells are then going to do is because they don't have the reactive oxygen species to kill bacteria. So here in red, I have outlined where our bacteria are. And on the outside, you'll see all these dark nuclei, which are your phagocytic cells. And they are essentially surrounding the bacteria and uh, isolating it from the rest of the body so the bacteria can't do much damage. These structures in histology, they're called gran granulomas, and you'll see them in people who have this NADPH oxidase deficiency because all of these bacteria can't die. Now, another important thing to know about this chronic granulomatous disease is that it's often X-linked recessive. And so it's important to know the uh, inheritance pattern. Next, we're going to talk about our superoxide dismutase. So this enzyme is not only used in attack, but it's also used in defense. So in, in essence, it's like Superman. So here's the general reaction of superoxide dismutase. It's important to know just these two 
compounds right here. So two superoxide molecules are going to get converted to hydrogen peroxide. This hydrogen peroxide is less deadly than superoxide because let's say you, in this case, when you had bacteria, you wanted to create um, hydrogen peroxide in order to make hypochlorite to kill your bacteria. But let's say this oxygen superoxide uh, escapes the phagolysosome or it's produced somewhere else. You don't want it causing damage to your cells because these compounds over here can't, can not only kill bacteria, but they, they can also damage our own cells. So that's why superoxide dismutase is like Superman. It's going to kill the bad guy, it will help kill the bad guy, and it's also going to protect your local neighborhood citizens or our own cells because it's going to get rid of this superoxide molecule, turning it into something way more tame, which is hydrogen peroxide. Still not totally good for you, but a better alternative. And superoxide dismutase has a couple important cofactors, which are all metals. So extracellularly, you're going to have copper. In the cytosol, you get copper and zinc. And in the mitochondria, you get manganese. So how you remember that is that Superman is the man of steel, so steel is a metal, just like all of these cofactors. Next, we're going to talk about something very important called catalase. So our superoxide dismutase went ahead and deactivated our superoxide radical to make hydrogen peroxide. But now you have all this hydrogen peroxide in your cell, and that's not necessarily good for it either. So we want to deactivate it to something totally not dangerous, so water and oxygen. So our catalase enzyme is important for doing that. Another superhero you can remember is Catwoman. So hydrogen peroxide gets inactivated by catalase or Catwoman. And finally, we're going to go to our big picture over here, which is our full pathway. And I have a couple extra steps to talk about. So our superoxide molecule can uh, also react with NO and create peroxynitrite. This is an important nitrogen, so it's called an RNOS, reactive nitrogen oxygen species, uh, and it's also toxic to bacteria. So anything here underlined in red is toxic to bacteria as well as our own cells. So here's superoxide, I should have underlined that as well. And all of these steps we've talked about already, so NADPH oxidase, superoxide dismutase, uh, except for this step right here. So hydrogen peroxide can be converted in the oxidative burst to hydroxy radical. Now this is a very dangerous reactive molecule and it can be made in two ways. Well, one way is the Haber-Weiss reaction where hydrogen peroxide reacts with superoxide and the other is called the Fenton reaction where hydrogen peroxide reacts with iron two plus and essentially these molecules, superoxide and iron 2 plus, give one electron to hydrogen peroxide and form hydroxy radical. Then this hydroxy radical can go ahead and kill bacteria. So these, these are also found in this these two reactions also happen in phagolysosomes and help in the destruction of bacteria. Now let's say you don't want this hydroxy radical sticking around in your body, you're gonna want to get rid of it. You're gonna use the glutathione peroxidase reaction to do that. So what glutathione peroxidase does is it takes the mo molecule glutathione and basically oxidizes it. So it gives the electron two hydroxy radical or two hydrogen peroxide and creates water. So we have plus one electron to these molecules creating water which is harmless. Another way to transform hydrogen peroxide as I've showed before to water is to use catalase. And now when you oxidize glutathione, you make a two glutathione molecules combined together with a disulfide bond here. And to reform this important antioxidant, sorry, I'm outlining these in red. So just remember that these aren't actual bad guys. These are good guys. Uh, to get this, to get glutathione back, you're going to need to use NADPH uh, in order to give back an electron to glutathione, glutathione and separate it and form GSH. Okay, so what have I not mentioned? Everything here is good. Oh, water in, 
in, uh, in the body can also be converted back to hydroxy radical using UV light where you, you knock, essentially you knock off one electron off of water because UV comes in and it's high energy and it's going to knock out one electron off of water and you're going to get your hydroxy radical formation. So that's dangerous. That's why people say stay out of UV light. That's why radiation is dangerous because you can form these reactive oxygen species in the body. And these are not only toxic to bacteria, but also toxic to you. Okay, so I hope this diagram will help you out. Something else that I haven't mentioned yet and that is also important is that moving along from left to right in, in each one of these steps, you are adding one electron to oxygen. So oxygen plus one electron will give you superoxide. Add another electron, hydrogen peroxide. One more, hydroxy radical. I've added, if here, little electron symbols, minus one electron, plus one electron, in order to help you know whether this is a oxidation or reduction reaction. Remember, oxidation equals the loss of electrons and reduction equals the gain of electrons. An easy acronym to remember is oil rig, O-I-L for loss and R-I-G for gain. So re reduction, gain, oxidation, loss. All right, I hope this video helped. I'll see you guys in the next one.